This is Premier Aerodynamics podcast number 23. And today, this is the second part of the two-part podcast. Podcast number 22, we're talking about how noise is produced on high-speed trains. Today, in this podcast number 23, we're looking at how to reduce that noise. So if you haven't looked at number 22 yet, go back and uh, watch and listen to that one, and you'll understand how noise is being produced on a high-speed train. But let's get into and also what we're looking at today, the same paper as last time, is called Research on Aerodynamic Noise Reduction for High-Speed Trains. This is open access and you can find online if you like. The link is in the description. So let's talk about how to reduce the noise of a high-speed train. So let's go through quickly what, again, some of the different parts of the train is that are producing noise. First of all, you have something called the pantograph, and that is the little wire thing that sticks up from a train and hits the wires of a head, and that's what gets electricity. And then you have like the transformers that attach to on the train roof. You have the air conditioning unit and all these little bits and pieces on there. You also have something called the bogies, which is which are the wheel sections. So on the train, you have certain wheel compartments. And so each one of those are called bogies. The first one produces the most noise and then subsequently less as you go downstream, generally speaking. You also have things such as the spacing between two coaches. And then a bunch of other little things, but they focus on the pantograph because that is one of the major noise producing sources and a few other little things in today's podcast. So let's get into it. So they have a section called noise reduction analysis based on the main noise sources. Optimizing the structures of the main noise sources can lead to effective noise reduction. The main structural aspects considered for such optimization in this work are as follows. Two different operation op orientations of the pantographs three different structures of the pantograph fairing, two different installation positions of these pantographs, different pantograph lifting configurations, three different structures of the intercoach spacings, and four different structures of the bogey skirting boards. So the skirting boards, what that effectively is, is just putting a, a piece of material, uh, closing off those wheels. So you sort of like have um, an enclosure for it to stop noise coming in and out and also air hitting it as much. First of all, they look at mitigating the pantograph noise. And I look at the different operation orientations of the pantograph. And this is really amazing. They have looked at two different orientations. This is a single pantograph model. So think of it like um, a V shape effectively. So the spring action hitting, coming up and pushing the top arm and hitting the wire. So that's what this pantograph looks like. And they tested it in something called the knuckle upstream orientation and the knuckle downstream orientation. The knuckle upstream orientation means that it folds down and the that bracket, the, the pivot point, is facing upstream. Knuckle downstream means that that pivot point is facing downstream, that hinge. So interestingly, when they put the knuckle in the upstream orientation, the pantograph noise is the maximum is 87.3 decibels, 87.3. When you put it in a downstream position, it drops to 80.2. So there's some decibel difference drop when you just flipped it around and put the knuckle downstream instead of upstream. And they have this pantograph operating at different heights. So it's um, springed a little bit more or less. So it's opened up or closed a little bit more depending on how close the wire is to the train. And this, this decibel reduction is fairly consistent. Like it does change between seven decibels and up to 14 decibels depending on the height of this pantograph but it's still a massive reduction just for something so small. Then they also looked at um, why this happened. So according to the con contrast analysis, so they looked at the CFD of it, they found that larger vortices are generated at the pantograph knuckle and the back end of the pan head when the pantograph is in the knuckle upstream orientation. In addition, vortex shedding and reconstruction more negatively influence the flow field than they do in the knuckle downstream orientation. So you have, all these vortices being produced when the knuckle is up, positioned upstream and that's hitting other sections downstream and that's creating a lot more noise. In the case of the knuckle downstream orientation, there aren't as many vortices and these vortices aren't hitting as many structures on the downstream section. So that's why we have this noise reduction. They then also looked into the what they call the pantograph fairing design. So as I mentioned, when you have this pantograph coming to the train, you have this section around it. So you have like the transformer and shielding and this and that. They also have an air conditioning unit just to help stream of it. And they tested two configurations, one with the air conditioning unit slightly detached and one with it completely attached to this fairing. 
And what they found was that when you have the air conditioning unit um, separated, you get a drop in the maximum uh, sound of 0 0.4 decibels. So again, something so small uh, makes a difference. It's not a huge difference. It's not like seven decibels, but 0 0.4 decibels is still quite a, a decent reduction for something insignificant, really, when you think about the geometry. For the configuration where the air conditioning unit was attached to the rest of the fairing, they found that a large vortex is created by the air conditioning unit and the folded pantograph area, which aggravates vortex shedding and reconstruction. For the configuration where the uh, air conditioning unit was detached, they found that a stepped structure appears between the air conditioning unit and the pantograph fairing region. This cushions the vortex shedding of the air conditioning unit against the folded pantograph. So again, it's perhaps not just this change in geometry, it's the effect of all these vortices coming off of this change in geometry impacting the pantograph. So again, the pantograph is really just the, the bad boy of the train is making all this trouble. <laughs> and then they say that a smaller vortex forms from when you have a detached air conditioning unit from the pantograph area. And this has little influence on the flow through structures in the pantograph fairing region. A larger vortex arises near the pantograph fairing and in the second intercoach spacing. So this is the spacing between two coaches. However, the vortex formed in the case when the air conditioning unit is attached to the pantograph area is larger and wider than in the other case when the air conditioning unit is separate. Therefore, the flow field performance of the air conditioning unit separated is superior to the other way. Then they also looked at the different pantograph fairing installation positions. So you can have the pantograph at the front of the coach, at the back of the coach, or somewhere in the middle. So if you've seen like trains in your city or whatever, they might have them upstream, downstream or whatever. And they're looking at how this affects the noise. So in this section, they call it different pantograph fairing installation positions. The aerodynamic noise characteristics for a pantograph fairing installed near the second intercoach spacing are analyzed. The section focuses on aerodynamic performance and characteristics of a pantograph fairing installed near the first coach intercoach spacing. Compared with the rearward position of the pantograph fairing, the forward position results in stronger and wider turbulent kinetic energy distributions between the first intercoach spacing and the lifted pantograph, as well as a stronger turbulent kinetic energy in the insulated region. So turbulent kinetic energy is very important when it comes to sound production. Generally speaking, when you have a higher turbulent kinetic energy, you have a higher sound, uh, a higher noise. So what they're saying here is when you have the pantograph at the back of the coach, so not at the front, but at the back, you get a reduction in the thermal kinetic energy, and this is going to generally result in a drop in noise. And they go into this and say, compared with the sound pressure level for the fairing in the rearward position, the um, in the forward position, the maximum sound pressure level is 3.1 decibels higher. So that's a huge amount. 3.1 decibels is very loud but compared to um, what it was. These results indicate that in terms of reducing aerodynamic noise, the installation of the pantograph fairing near the second intercoach spacing is more appropriate. So what they're saying is put this pantograph fairing back away from the first intercoach spacing so it's just in front of an intercoach spacing, not behind. If you put it behind, then there's this um, higher noise that occurs. And interestingly, they have um, a really nice graph actually where they show the, the sound pressure level effectively of the train, the train length. And they compare what the sound pressure level is when you have the pantograph upstream compared to downstream. And when it's downstream, you just get a complete drop in this, in this pressure, this noise across the board. So it really has quite a, a wide ranging effect. In addition to this, these two, um, so the pantograph and the fairing and where it's positioned, they also looked into the intercoach spacing. So this is the distance or like how the geometry of the section between two coaches. An, inter an intercoach spacing in a train is a cavity with a particular streamwise length to depth ratio. The flow physics can differ from different length, uh, length to depth ratios. And this is true. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember the paper that I first saw this in, but I remember it was like over a decade ago. I uh, saw this paper looking into 
the effects of having the different spacings between compartments in a cargo train. So when you have all those pallets on a cargo train, if you have one missing, how does that change your aerodynamics? And it changes very dramatically. You get changes in the pressure drag and even skin friction drag, so it is important. They say that the region is defined by the top, sides, and bottom of the intercoach spacing, and it acts aerodynamically on the open cavity. The aerodynamic noise generation mechanism in this region can be characterized as self-sustained oscillation. So that's an interesting way of classifying it. What that means is this noise is just perpetually being produced and it's self-sustaining. So there's probably a feedback loop there on itself. Specifically, a high unsteady shear layer detaches from a leading edge of the top and size of the intercoach spacing and impinges on the trailing edge. So in other words, you get separated flow and then this hits the second coach. And then that creates noise. Thus, a large recirculating flow forms in the cavity and acoustic pressures propagate upstream, which strengthens the unsteadiness of the upstream shear layer. Okay, so that's, that's what I mentioned earlier, where you have this, up, this um, feedback loop where you have, first of all, this change in pressure, and then this feeds back up and then continually amplifies this change in pressure. So to reduce the noise in this spacing, you need to get rid of that. To do that, they looked at two different dimensions, two different configurations. The first one had a certain dimension, so it had a length of 6.36 meters, a width of 1.25 meters, and a height of 2.91 meters. That's not really that important uh, for this paper. What's more important is what they did for the second configuration, and that was they blocked off the sides. So instead of having an open interconnected area, they blocked it off, so there's nothing there. So it's just a flat sheet now. And what they found was the thermokinetic energy in this intercoach spacing area is more evenly distributed and weaker than when it's not covered, especially on the windward side of the intercoach spacing. Thus, the noise power and radiated noise in this covered uh, section is lower than if it's not covered. And what they found was that it's a reduction of about um, 0 0.4 decibels. So that's pretty good. Small little reductions everywhere add up. So that's somewhat of a uh, expected result because without this shielding, you have this geometry, which is fairly uneven somewhat, and it's quite square, and it's going to be exposed to very high moving, very fast moving flow. When you shield it off, you get rid of that. So then they also looked into the bogey region. So noise reduction in the bogey regions. The bogies, as I mentioned at the start, and in podcast number 22, are the wheel sections. So these bogies are considered to be the main source of aerodynamic noise on high-speed trains. However, it is difficult to reduce noise by using streamlined designs for these structures because of their complexity and their turbulent vortices in the flow field. So <laughs> that's true. O around wheels and moving structures, there's a massive amount of unsteadiness and you can't really change the geometry too much. You obviously need to have wheels unless you're using, I guess, mag lifts sort of thing. I don't know. But with the wheels, you can't really get around to that, around that too much. So... They optimize optimization by means of the bogey skirt boards is one of the most common mitigation methods. Bogey skirt boards can serve as sound barriers for sound insulation against near field noise radiation, thereby also decreasing the far field noise radiation. So a skirting board is just, as I mentioned at the start of the podcast, just a piece of material that blocks off the wheels from the majority of the flow. Four types of bogey skirt board structures are presented. In essence, they have just the most basic one, which is just this slat going over part of the wheels and it connects to the rest of the carriage. Then they have two other ones which have rounded edges when they connect. So there's a bit of rounding on the bottom edges. Then there's other ones where there's, there are chamfers. So a few little different designs and they're very minor, but they do make a difference as we'll talk about in a second. They found that the maximum the noise for the just the plain skirting board is lower than the other skirting board board design. So whenever you put chamfers or you round the edges, that actually increases the noise. And that's kind of expected because with noise, you really need to have a structure that, it, that the flow impinges upon, often a sharp structure to make noise. So when you round these corners or you chamfer them, now there's another surface there that the flow can hit and make noise. So that's somewhat expected. 
The results indicated that the radiation and propagation of the noise from the bogey are most effectively blocked by the bogey skirt boards, which are plain, so no rounding. So before we go any further, make sure to check out everything we do here at Primary Dynamics. Check out the instrumentation we do. We make an atmosphere hall that helps you un to keep track of the air density as you run your experiments. We also make PRV systems. We also make traversing systems, so check them out. Check out the courses we put on to make you a better aerodynamicist. We put on CFD courses, experimental and theory. And check out the conference we put on every year, International Aerodynamics Conference. It's there for all aerodynamicists to get together and talk about what we love, aerodynamics. So coming back to the noise reduction, they talk about the optimum high-speed train structure for noise. So putting all this together. The features of this geometric model are as follows. The second pantograph, so that means it's moved towards the, it's installed at, at the rear of the, the carriage and it's positioned such that the knuckle is downstream so that hinge that that pivot point is downstream the pantograph fairing is mounted on the roof and the mid train and is separated from the air conditioning unit so that would all of those together will drop the noise by quite a lot of decibels in addition you want to have a semi enclosed intercoach spacing so that means the um just those slats that shield off the that discontinuity in geometry between the two coaches. And you also want to have skirting boards around the bogey sections with no chamfers or rounded corners. They found that if you put all this onto the train, the maximum uh, noise drops by 3.5 decibels than the original model. So that's pretty good. That's quite a big reduction. And then they sum up and they say, the sound pressure level produced by the first bogey on the head train is higher than those of the other bogeys. And the sound power level of the second intercoach spacing is higher than that of the first. For current high speed trains, recommendations for reducing noise are as follows Use the knuckle downstream pantograph orientation. Install the pantograph fairing at the central position on the middle coach. Use the knuckle downstream orientation for the second pantograph when the high speed train is running in the opposite direction. Use the fairing structure for the intercoach spacing so you block off that geometry as much as you can and use the skirting boards with no rounded edges or chamfers. That's it for this podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out our other podcasts. Check out everything we do here at Premier Dynamics. All the links can be found in the description. Peace out.